All right, y'all. So the man behind the mask has kindly informed me, like, thank you so much, dude, for telling me about the, the website for Dread Bomb has updated with lore. I just, I'm just checking that shit out. I only checked out Sparks just now and Sawbones. Just looking at it. Okay, so Russia. Right, Russia. She's from Russia. It's, it's weird because with Sparks, it's been implied that she's Bulgarian, not Russian. Maybe it's something that's been there all the time because Sparks' Steam card does say she's Russian. But, you know, I, I guess that's it, yeah. She's Russian. Finally, confirmation. For goodness sakes, it's been so long. How long? 2015, y'all. 2015. Waiting for six, seven, three years. Three years to just get confirmation that, yes, she is Russian. I know there's a few folk who were very happy to hear that she could have been Bulgarian. So it's, uh, like, I'm so sorry, y'all. Damn. I know it's not much, but that, that's extra bits of lore. You know, people play video games because they like the game. Some folk like the cosmetics. For me, I like the lore and the writing and the creative stuff the devs put into it. I love, I love even the layout of this. The graphic design is incredible. Oh my god, it's so clean. And I know lore is definitely something that's very niche for appreciation in the DB community. But for me, I love DB's lore and writing. It may not be much, but what SD can do with it is phenomenal to me. A lot of other games, they try to overextend and put in so much lore, so much writing, or no writing at all. But for DB and what SD does, they just give you this. And it's just a delicious, bite-sized piece. Yum. Delicious. Oh my, like, lore. As a child, she was told she could be anything. She misheard and thought they said anyone. That's so, like, even the way this is structured... You can tell there is talent. There is so much talent with the writing team and the creative team behind DB. Like, I, I like the creativity behind it. Like, you, I gotta give the credit, y'all. All right, so balance. Y'all, I, I love the way it loads like that. God damn. I love, I just love DB's lore. I love the creativity and the narrative that it has. I never noticed it, but Sawbones' ear looks a little messed up. <laughs> Anyway, let's see this. The best thing about being a merc for Sawbones is the short combi. Just head to the front lines. That's so cute, y'all. So Houston, Texas. I went over this when I first went over Sparks. The rest of the mercenaries I've not checked out yet what their profiles are. So this is exciting. Now the one thing, y'all, look at his name. Philip Swift. I remember back during the Alpha for DB, his full name was Phil Swift. And the other names, what is it? I know that Vasily had a completely different name from what he has in the current game today, and I know that for Artie, his real name was CJ Wang back in the Mark Bios. And this is this is good for me. I'm so glad that lore is coming back in the game, even itty bits like this, because it may it really may not seem like much to a lot of people, but for people like me who have actually been invested in the game and who have wondered about the game and its writing and its creativity for like four or five years, it gives a real peace of mind knowing that the answers are here. Like, no more guesswork. Nothing. Now, this is what's fucking me up, okay? Because I assumed that Sawbones was a much older gentleman. Like, let's say, in his 50s or 40s. 1986? Really? If you calculate that and put into DB setting, which is the year 2021, Sawbones here... He's 35. He has age spots and he has gray hair in his founder skin. He's bald as hell and he's got some gray in here as well. He's 35. I don't know, y'all. He's working too hard. He's stressing himself out, y'all. God dang it. Anyway, moving on. Let's let's move on, y'all. Okay, Phoenix time. Phoenix, a good man to head by his side if things get tough. If he gets knocked down, he gets right back up. That's so cute. That's so funny, y'all. Oh, oh, Gonzalo Ramos. Ooh, 1989. How old? You're 32? I thought he'd be 50 or 40. That's really, that's all, it's also weird because this would make him the third male character in DB to also be around 31, 32, 33. Because I know that Vasily and Phantom are 31 or 32 or 33. So, I don't remember this line. Yeah, I think, yeah, some of this is new. Like, it's been changed in a good way. It sort of explains more about Phoenix. This is fancy. It's also good for new players because, oh lord, one thing DB has got going for, and I've said this before, its characters are surprisingly good. They're fun, they're humorous, they have the same vibe as the TF2 mercenaries, which I adore. Uh, when it comes to other characters and other multiplayer shooters like DB and TF2, they don't 
quite had the same charm because with TF2 and DB's mercenaries, they're jokey, they're funny, they they're serious, they're everything you find in a normal functioning human being, but sometimes a bit more comedic. But when you look at something like Overwatch, the characters are very plastic. They're idealized versions of basically their country of origin. And you have games like Lawbreakers, which everyone's yelling. You have games like Quake Champions. Again, everyone's just yelling, being cocky as shit. But with DB's Mercenaries, they laugh, they cry, they get upset, they get bashful, they get embarrassed. You know, it's little things like this that give the game a real sense of charm. And it should have come to a surprise to anybody why people really, 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 really love these Mercenaries. They're just so well made. Like, personality, design sometimes. I'm looking at you, Javelin. Why are you the second nader? Why? Okay, not gonna lie, this is kind of cool. Guardian will do anything she can to protect her teammates. Her enemies are a different matter. Ooh, dot, dot, dot. Ooh, yeah. I love that she's making this face like, huh, well, enemies, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> anyway, let's look at this. Oh, okay. It's 22nd May 1993. How old would you be? Okay, so Guardian is 28 years of age. All right, all right. I thought she'd be a little, uh, just a little bit older. I thought she'd just be 30, but that's just me nitpicking, okay? Growing up, oh, this is new, I haven't seen this, ooh! Growing up in a family of doctors, there was little doubt that Guardian would study medicine. Not long after she qualified, a terrorist attack destroyed her parents' home and so, oh no, oh, extra lore though. Oh, Guardian immediately returned home to help in the relief efforts, initially working for the CDA. Okay, so confirm CDA, pressed by her cool head and crisis management skills, she was talent spotted by Pure Medical to pilot their Sky Show project in London. Period Medical. That's also shown on Sparks' gun. So, hmm. Hmm, lore. Hmm. State of the art force shield. The Sky Shield is a highly mobile defensive technology that is the ability to destroy range attacks with their healing pulse. Guardian can revive multiple. Does it. Should that say Bionic Pulse instead? Because last time I played DB, her pulse didn't heal. Hmm. Okay, all right, all right. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. She's the third Korean character in a multiplayer shooter that acts as some sort of tank. Because with Guardian, she's meant to take the hits from fire support attacks, and she's also Korean. Then you have Toki from Lawbreaker. She's also a Korean combat medic who's also a tank. She has her own holographic shield thing going on. And then you have Diva from Overwatch, who's also a Korean tank with her own holographic shield. What is this? Like, it's like a trend with y'all, with these with these Korean ladies who are quite young and they're tanks. So, I don't know. Okay, okay, over time, over time, over time. She's my main, y'all. A mobile support mark with medical training and something to prove. Um, it doesn't explain that much about or, but I'll take it. I'll take it. She's my main. Ooh. Oh, ooh, I see the name, I see the bio, Chantel Jameson. Oh, this is a real treat for me, y'all. Oh, SD, thank you. Uh, I'm gonna give you a kiss. Mm -hmm. Real names, we're going for real names right now. Oh, Lord, Chantel. Oh, oh, 2nd October 1990, born Houston, Texas, the same as uh, Saw Daddy. Let's go check Aura's age out. Okay, that makes it the fourth character I've seen right now who's in their 30s. So 31, 32, 33. Y'all. <laughs> Y'all, everyone's 30. This is so nice to just hear, like, Aura's real name, Chantel Jameson. I remember, um,. I had a really stupid idea where what if Aura's real name was actually Laura. So dumb. I prefer this. Oh, thank y'all so much. Oh, mm, 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 get a little bot of Texas. Mm, oh. God, I was just reacting to just the medics. Imagine the rest of these characters. Come on, y'all. We got to do this shit. I've been waiting so long for this. SD, I want to kiss you. Mm, uh. Okay, turtle time. Mm. His state of the art shield protects his teammates and frustrates us indefinitely. I swear to God, if he's like 30, 32, 33, y'all, this is like some sort of strip tease, but for lore. Name unknown, date of birth unknown, nationality, and car. Oh, and car turkey. Where's that? Oh, it's a capital turkey. All right, all right. Okay. Oh, let's see if this changed. Let's see if this changed, y'all, because I remember that back when. Um, the Shell Shock event went live in 2017. The lead writer, Ed Stern, gave everybody a piece of Turtles lore. 
so that they could probably use it in their uh, promotional vids for uh, Turtles release. So let's see if this has changed. Okay, not looking, not looking, looking now. Okay, that's weird because the gameplay summary for the character is on the top, but from what we've seen previously, it's usually on the bottom. So let's check this out. Let's. Okay, I remember this. Glass half empty. I remember this. He was a lab tech person. Can you all ever see Turtle in a white coat with those tattoos? And that beard, and those piercings, and that mullet. It's just a dang shame. This is not here. Proxy knows two things for sure. She can repair anything, and people don't look down nearly as often as they should. Ugh. That is, I love the way that these little things are written. Like, oh, y'all, the folk who do the writing for DB, they, they know. All right, they got some here. It's delicious. I love what they do. Let's see, how old is Proxy? 26, 27. I remember that her birthday was 93? Okay, Elizabeth Proxy Wales. Yeah, 95. What's that? That's the English? English flag? Okay. I'm done. I don't know my geography. Let me just say, I like this. Like, this looks so nice. I like it. Okay. Oh, this is new. All right, so the it's been updated. Ooh, it's delicious. Okay, in April 2021. April! Okay, it never gave out the month, only the year. Ooh, this is yummy. I like I like knowing that the world of DB is getting more and more realized. Okay, I'm not that excited about Proxy's lore because she's already received so much lore already. Like, dang. Alright. So, Fletcher. Fletchy time. I remember, I remember that his real name is Gaspar Akingbola. An objective specialist with an explosive ego. Ooh, ooh. Ooh, anyway, like this. Okay, November 6, 1984. He's 37. Sawbones is 35. Aura is how old was she? Was she 30? Then everyone's in their goddamn 30s. The hell? Could be doing it wrong because maybe I'm looking at the date wrong. You know, maybe DB takes place in 2022, 23. I might be giving SD too much credit here, but I really, really, really do enjoy that the gameplay section of the lore. Uh, it also counts as lore itself because it gives you a little bit of the personality of who this mercenary is and what they play like. Because look at this, he's also very good with shotguns. Subtlety really isn't his strong suit. Like, hmm, named after his voice actor. I wonder what the voice actors are doing right now. It's been a long time, hasn't it? Damn. Okay, time. It's time. It's time for uh, Bushy Bushwhacker. Ooh. This is my favorite word. Mustachioed. Mechanic. Adept at repairing objective vehicles and disarming bombs. Equipped with a deployable auto turret. He is just a redneck version of Mario. Let's be real here. He's got the mustache, the hat, and the red. Uh, yep, that hasn't changed. No. Um, one thing to take note here is that when Bushwhacker's real name was first introduced, it was back on the forums. It was also introduced alongside Proxy's real name, which was originally Lisa... Wells. It was, yeah, it was originally Lisa Wells. So, in that same forum post that revealed his real name, um, he had a nickname, and it was T-Rat. So, T-R-A-T. So, the letter T and a rat as an animal. And it took me so long to figure out that it was actually a play on words for turret. So, Clive T-Rat Fitzmorgan is actually Clive Turret Fitzmorgan. So, that that's cute. No, no date of birth. Hmm, he's probably like 30, 30 something, y'all, like the rest of them. Teaching can be, oh, Texas. Ooh, so, three of the American mercenaries we have, who I've just gone through, are all from Texas. Huh, nowhere else in the U.S., just Texas. Just Texas, y'all. Anyway, I think that might be new. Yeah, I think that might be new. Because I remember it was just this bit that was the opening line for Bushwhacker's original dialogue. Oh, there's a typo. Hmm, there should be an H there. Okay, teaching can be rewarding, but usually more emotionally than it is financially. That's gotta be new, right? Yeah, he is. This thing's been retconned. Alright, y'all, I'll double check, and yeah, almost every single bit of Bushwhacker's uh, lore here has been retconned. Like, it's been completely changed. So, now one thing I gotta critique SD4 is that there was such a big opportunity for Bushwhacker to have some sort of reference to his role as a teacher because in game he's pretty much just, he's a cowboy, I'm a cowboy, I do cowboy things, howdy, howdy, howdy. But it would have been cool to maybe have him, I don't know, grade the mercenaries like he would say, oh nice shot, A plus, or when he takes down an enemy he's like, detention. 
you know, because it says here, roughest, what was it, toughest schools in America. Dang, he'd be so toughed up, y'all. So there's my critique, but of course, what can you do with, with Bushwhacker, especially with this dialogue, because the voice actors are already done with the game. They've moved on, probably, years after they record the lines. So maybe Bushwhacker could have some renders or something on, on the main screen of the splash art, where it shows him, I don't know, teaching or something. Just something to reference his lore, because it does seem very disconnected from what he from who he is in-game. That's what I gotta say. But anyway, this is still good. I like this, but still, date of birth. I swear to God, if he's gonna be 30 again. So that's the engineers. Cover the medics now. Oh, Stoker time. Harold Sands. Ooh, uh, a true Brit. He has a stiff upper lip, a mask, a face mask which never moves, and a whole lot of napalm. Ooh, 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 this is fancy. Gonna make me dance. Ooh, gonna make me dance. It's 1 a.m. in the morning. Ooh, Molotov. I don't, I don't think this has changed at all. Huh. Huh. I'm not that um, excited with Stoker's lore because he's already had a little bit, a bit of his bio exposed by Amy back during the Rogue and Vogue event. So there's that. So moving on to Sky Daddy. Ooh, 30. I guess he's in his 30s again. Hmm. The mark of a truly great merc is someone who knows when to ask for help from their friends, especially when those friends can deliver a devastating airstrike. That's so cool. That's so cool. Ooh. Okay, air stuff. Oh, don't spoilers. Hmm? My eye was looking there like, ooh, give it to me. No, 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 no. He's 35. What is with these mercenaries and being all in their 30s? Why? Why? Oh, that's a cute place. Dundee. Is Skyhammer having a name? It's really weird. This might take a while for it to get warmed up to me, but all right. Glenn, Mr. Harewood, SD. Why are they all in their 30s? You're the same age as... Is Saw Daddy 986? 986. 9th October 986. 9th October 986 as well. So, Sky Daddy and Saw Daddy are both having the same birthday. 180, 511. Okay, 97. Did they copy? No, they, they couldn't have because that one's different to you. Okay, so they're sharing birthdays, y'all. Sky Daddy and Saw Daddy. Two daddies. Dang. Part of me thinks it could be an error, but part of me wishes it isn't, because it's kind of cute that two of them have the same birthday. All right. All right. Cure time. Cure time. Some people are dog people. Others before cats. Kira is an orbital laser kind of per... Oh. Who, wrote, who wrote this? This is One thing that really bothers me about Kira's design is that she has an ammo station, right? But so does Stoker, and Stoker's ammo station can be seen on his character model. But for Kira, she doesn't have a visible ammo station on her design. To me, if Kira would ever have an ammo station on her body, I'd like to think she'd put it uh, around her lower back area. So it kind of looks like a sword. I'll, I'll just put it on here like, like that. Bam. Like that. It gives her a unique silhouette. Maybe she can put her sword there. And her other stuff, maybe she can put some cute Japanese trinkets or stickers on it. And it looks really cute. Like that, that's me, y'all. Like, it's really weird that she doesn't have an ammo station on her uh, design. Skyhammer and Artie, they both have ammo packs on their character models, and Javelin, she has her ammo all over her, and Stoker has his ammo stations, and then Kira is left out. Oh, she coming at me. So that's not her real name. Okay, let's, let's check out her age. You're 30? But Kira looks so young. Okay, this doesn't change. I don't think it's a change at all. 30. That means she's another character who's in their 30s. SD, what the hell? Why are they all in their 30s, y'all? She looks like she's at least in her early 20s because I assume that when Kira's lore mentioned her PhD research, I I thought she was a university student or university graduate. I'd expect her to be like 30 years old. That's still cool, though. Like, she's older than Proxy. Like, she can boss proxy around like, hey, I'm a, I got a PhD. I'm a professor. I like that she's 30. Like, it's like, ooh, ooh, ooh. That would mean that proxy and guardian would be the youngest mercenaries in the game. I still suspect that Turtle could be one of the youngest. Turtle, right, his date of birth hasn't been shown yet, so I'm, I'm assuming he might be in his late 20s or early 20s. You never know, because he's got the beard. I live in a Turkish and Middle Eastern heavy neighborhood. 
And there's like guys who are like 16 who have full beards, so who knows with that. Then you have Spark. She's an international super spy, right? And throughout all of her renditions, from her concept art to her official render to her CG trailer to her in-game model, her face is always changing, which I find to be... Is Essie doing some purpose because she's an international super spy? She has to change her face? Or is it just like they can't decide on her age? So even in this, like she looks like to be... How old? 40s? Maybe even early 50s, but taking care of herself? Because she's a super spy? So there's that. Turtle. Turtle's date of birth was not shown. So I like to think he's in his early 20s or late 20s. So there's that. Mostly because there isn't any younger male mercenaries in the game. I mean, you have Proxy and Guardian who are in their uh, mid and late 20s. So it's only fair that there's a dude who's within the same age range. Why 30s? No, wait. Oh, before I should have done this, I should have, like, guessed their ages, and I should have seen if I was right or not. Okay, so let's do this now. Javelin. I suspect that she would maybe be late 30s. Artie would be 40. Thunder. Mm, there's something about him that screams late 20s to me, but he could be older. Uh, For Rhino, I think 40s. 50s? That's where I'm going for. For Nader, I'm going maybe mid 30s. Mid 30s for her. For Fragger, I'm going for 40s. For you know, Vasily's age has been confirmed. For Red Eye, his age was implied because he was denied his pension. And in Down Under, and I live in Down Under, y'all. Like I'm an Aussie. On the pension age for Aussies is around 60, 65. So he's he's around the 60 age. For Phantom, again, his age was revealed. It was um, 31, 32, 33. For Hunter, yeah, his age was revealed as well. Hunter is the oldest confirmed Dirty Bomb character. He's in his 50s. I know that I just said that Red Eye is, is in his 60s, but it's implied. It hasn't been like fully solidified, confirmed. So we'll, we'll see for that. Then there is Amy. How old will she be? I'm thinking that Amy would be a little bit older because she has quite a lot of experience with her backstory as a hacker, as a detective, as a bodyguard, as maybe even a part-time chef. Because <laughs> she she just mentioned cooking the mercenaries and eating them up. Okay, Javelin keeps her Alice plot with ammo and her enemies. And oh my god, that is my favorite line right now. Oh my god. Okay, this, it tells you who Javelin is and what she does and what she does to her enemies and her personality. It's all in how many words? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 words or less. Yeah, the writers at SD are very clever. Ingen Thorsen. Okay, Arendel, Norway. Isn't that in Frozen? Arendel? Like the Frozen movie? Okay, whatever. Oh, okay, so Javelin's 40. You wouldn't tell based on her CG render because I do know that her in game model does make her actually look 40. So. So yeah, forty. So she's she's not her like thirties, mid thirties. She's 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 forty, exactly forty. And she's tall. <laughs> she's six foot. Dang. At least she's not in her goddamn thirties, like all y'all. So okay, Artie. Artie time. Artie. I've been waiting for Artie for a long time, y'all. Long, long, long time. I love Artie. I love Sawbones. I love everyone on this list. But I've been waiting. I remember that Artie's real name was C J Wang. Okay, how old will he be? Because if he was friends with Sawbones, then they could have been in the military together. That means he could be 35 like Sawbones. Let's, let's double check, y'all. He can deliver intense artillery salvos to supply his team with ammo. Just don't ask him any questions and don't try to follow him if you enjoy breathing. Ooh, mystery, danger, delicious. Let's see here. CJ, oh, CJ Wong. Okay, so they just changed a letter in his name. Date of birth, 18th December, 1988. Let's check out the calculator. Sawbones is 35, 36? And then for Artie, he's 33? Huh. So, another person in their 30. So his name has changed from CJ Wang to CJ Wong. His date of birth is December 1988. Okay, we went through the medics, the engineers, and the fire support. It's time for the assaults and then the recons. Ooh. It'd be really cool, right, if, like, let's say this section just had Jekyll, and this section had uh, CDA, 
And then somewhere in the middle, somewhere here, it was just Mia and the other characters in DB. I think that'd be really neat. I think that'd be cool. Like you see Jekyll's bio, you'd see the CDA's bio, you know, both of their real names, their history, their lore. I think that'd be neat. Anyway, Thunder. I do recall that in Thunder's dialogue, he mentions that his real name could be Boris, and he jokingly refers to himself as Thunder Thunderovich Thunderovsky. I pronounce, I butchered that. I, I don't speak no Russian. He could be Russian. He might have been Expetsnaz. All we know for sure is his weapons are real and he knows how to. <laughs> y'all. Y'all, 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 y'all. I'm obsessed with these little itty bitty lines that describe the characters. It's a delicious bite. It's like, hum. Of course it would be unknown. Of course. Of course. Alright. He's meant to be mysterious. You're meant to know that he is pretending to be Russian. I would love <laughs> if he's super cute. If, like, the nationality part of this just had a question mark. Rhino, 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 Rhino. Slow and steady doesn't win Rhino any races. It does let him cause a massive amount. <sighs> y'all. Y'all. This. It's just. It's comedic. It's cute. It tells you a lot of the characters, what they do, their role. Oh. All in how many words? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, eighteen 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 18 words. 18 words. Okay, so he's 44 years old. I don't think... Yeah, I don't think this has changed. Maybe? Maybe not? I don't... I didn't really look that well into Rhino's lore. He barely has any in the first place. And he still doesn't have that much. Dang it. Really wish that there was just more. I have suspected for so long that Rhino and Turtle are related because they do share similar voice lines. For example, they mentioned the exact same voice line about Agia Sophia, and they both have the same mole on the exact same spot on their face. They both mentioned Agia Sophia. They're both named after animals, you know, a turtle and a rhino. One is acquainted with water, the other with land. So it's got me thinking, are they related? This is why I'm very giddy about itty bitty pieces of lore because it ends up connecting other pieces of lore as well and just makes all the lore so much bigger. And lets me explore the creative side of DB and the work that the devs have put in. So it's like, if they want to keep it unknown, they keep it unknown. It's just, oh, just, just one piece of identification away and bam. Merc work is serious business and Nader has the grenade launcher to prove it. Mm. Mm. This one's, this one's okay. It's like, it's Nader. Like, we love Nader, don't we? Alright. Claudia Sour. Mm, oh, oh, that's lucky. 1-1. One, one. Dang, so 1st January. 30. Thir thir like, her 30s again. 31. Let's change too much. Like, same lore, same everything. But 1990, that's... that's 30. Like, SD. Why are they all in their 30s? A man with a lot of problems and two solutions. The gun or the grenade. Oh, that's so actiony. That sounds like a perfect movie poster quote. Oh, by name. Unknown, 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 unknown. Oh, it's going to be unknown, and then it's going to be like, oh, I'm 30. Again, like everybody else. Yeah, so he's a, oh, it's right here. I'm, I'm an idiot. I'm trying to think. It's like, oh, it's right here. Fragger tells his old friends, like, I'm a couch performer for computer games. Like, why do they have to leave like that? Like, that's cool. That's a cool job. Why? They ain't no friends of yours, Fragger. Right, with a big gun and lots of ammo. This aggressive point man is a straight up player. Slayer. Whether he's assaulting objectives or defending them, he should be at the very front, the front line. Very front, the front line. Very front, the front line. Try to say that three times, y'all. Relying on teammates to heal slash revive and to resupply him with ammo while he lays down a hail of gunfire and frag grenades. Okay. All right, fragger. Dang it. No name, no date of birth, no height, no weight, no... It doesn't say where he's born. I thought that his birthplace would say Vermont because of fragger's voice line does mention that his mom lives in Vermont. So you might be thinking, okay, so he's from Vermont, but it just says unknown. So, hmm. Is ST still writing this out, or are they going to, like, update it with, like, a character update or something? You know, like an event or something. He's well aware your own heart can betray you. He's learned from bitter experience. Oh. Oh, Vasily. Oh, Vasily. So sad. Anyway, 
So this is another render of Vasily that's been redone. I remember the Vasily's had quite a lot of different renders for his character for a very long time because Esty kept changing his face around. I don't, I don't know why. I remember closed alpha. He had a different CG render than what he has now. It looked very stiff. There was another render for that. I, I don't remember what year that was in. And then came the pink render where he's just sort of maudlin just sort of standing still and then there is the in-game model as the render and then there's this render with him with a knife a gold knife a gold st you know, stiletto gross they just can't decide on a silly can they? anyway moving on abilities abilities yeah so leonard cummings 88 all right wow he's tall it's this line that's getting to me he's well aware your own heart can betray you he's learned from bitter experience so does that mention his sister doesn't mention a previous relationship. What does it mention? Because in Vasily's voice lines, he says something along the lines of, I eat best alone, I work best alone, I sleep best, and then he just starts weeping, starts crying. Did somebody break Vasily's heart? Huh. That adds a lot more lore than it should. Just say it. It's got me, it's got me wondering. Dang. Damn, that's that's messing me up, y'all. Anyway, let's go down. Let's let's check this out. Uh, red eye. Hmm. Can I get in? Ozzy, Ozzy, Ozzy. Oh, oh, oh. Let's read this. The last thing his enemies see before they die is a piercing red light in the smoke. Oh. Ooh. Peter Harrison. Hold on. Okay, 1972. Let's check this out. Okay, y'all. So I am an Ozzy myself. So I know a bit about uh red eye over here. So I'm just going to review all this, all right, right now. His date of birth says 1972. That would mean that he is 49? 49 years old. But look at here. The dossier. Oh, wait, it's right here. Pension. No pension. Because to get pension down under, you got to be in your 60s, y'all. And all of a sudden, his lore says he's 49. Not to mention, it says he's born in Adelaide, but with Red Eye's voice lines, he mentions that he has a friend in Parramatta. And that's all the way in Western Sydney. Not to mention, the Western Sydney area is known for its RSLs, which is the... If the RSL means the Return Services League Club. It, it's for um, Aussies who've worked in the military. And so, it's fucking me up that he's not in his 60s. He's not from Sydney. And that his name is Peter Harrison. Because, to me, it doesn't feel right. For him to have this name, and I'll tell you why, as an Australian. I mean, it's an Aussie as hell name, like, yo, I've, I've met a lot of Peters and a lot of Harrisons down under, and I'd be, I'd be completely fine if this, if this is a reference to something, but I really wish that his real name could have been Billy Singh. Now, Shiny Winner, this sounds super niche and super specific. Why would you want his name to be Billy Singh? Well, number one, let's be real here. Red Eye looks a lot like Bill from Left 4 Dead, doesn't he? Like, it's the beret. It's the green. It's the whole military thing. Bill Overbeck from Left 4 Dead, right? So the Bill name is part of Billy Singh. And Billy Singh is also in relation to a Aussie sniper. Our most famous sniper is Billy Singh. He's a Chinese Australian. So two birds, one stone. By having Red Eye's name be Billy or Bill or Bill name, whatever, you reference both Bill from Left 4 Dead and Billy, who's Australia's sniper. So there's that, like great reference. But no, it's Peter Harrison. Is this a reference to something else? As an Aussie, I hope that what I have said does provide y'all a bit of, um, oomph. It's cool. It's cool. This is fucking me up, Adelaide? Really not Western Sydney? I always assumed that Red Eye would be a Blue Mountains Australian, because I've met so many folk like him in the, from the Blue Mountains. I'm being very critical and using my Aussiness to Aussie-fy this Aussie right now. A man of few words. Once he sets his sights on a target, he never lets them go. Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's go out. Thomas Kellogg. That's so weird. You're telling me that Hunter, look at him. He is older than Red Eye. Red Eye, with all of his wrinkles, with all of his white hair, with him being denied pension, with his experience, is somehow younger than Hunter. So that makes Hunter the oldest confirmed mercenary in DB. I haven't really got into that much of Hunter's lore. To me, he still feels like a new character, so 
I'm still, I'm still warming up to him. Haha, <laughs> play on words, warming up because he's from Alaska. He's always cold. Whenever I mention the military, there's always something very iffy about it. Like, Stoker sacrificed himself with Napalm. Skyhammer is in plot to be a war criminal. Artie had some tough time in the military based off Sawbones' lore, which I believe to be connected. And Sawbones' lore, he had to cut out his commanding officer's kidney out. You have Phantom, who put farm animals in his commanding officer's room. You have Red Eye, who was discharged from the military. You have Fragger, who couldn't get back into civilian life because he was way too into military life. And he even, he even got praise for just shooting well. You have Nader here, who had to give a military life, but then end up going back to it. You have Thunder, who's obsessed with World War I Russian military stuff. There's a lot. And then you have Proxy, who used to be in the military. Like, of course, it's no brainer. Like, oh, of course, Shine would have, it would mention the military because they're mercenaries. They would have had some combat experience. But now that DB has mentioned the military so much, uh, even in, um, in Guardian's lore, he mentions her home city was attacked. It's got me thinking is SD going to reveal more about the world of DB through um, each country's military? Because we know about that there's um, corporations who are profiting off all these mercenaries and that there's terrorist attacks all over the world and that the CDA is everywhere and the Jackal is here and there. So, huh. Could this be alluding to some more lore with the military? Anyway, let's move on. She knows she's better than everyone else around her, but quite often, they're dead. <sighs> these are such... Like movie quotes, like poster movie quotes, y'all. I love it. Date of birth, 1992. All right, all right. How old is she then? All right, so Amy's 29. All right. Okay, so this was changed, so it added Proxy's um Proxy's Rogue and Vogue thing going on. Oh, in return for taking out her boss, Amy took out Proxy's eye. Oh, there's. SD's writers really know how to make do with just a small amount of words. Oh, it's so good. So, okay, so it's confirmed through this that Proxy and Amy are on okay-ish terms. They're not, like, huge rivals. Okay, that's good. That's good. That's how, that's how I interpreted um, their relationship back during the Rogue and Vogue comic, and now it's pretty much just confirmed in, in this. So that's cool. It's cool that despite the awful shit that has happened between Amy and Proxy, they're still sort of, okay, I fucked you up, you fucked me up, let's call it even. Like, that's that's very mature for both of them. I like that. Okay, just, just look at the lore, y'all. Just, just savoring all this right now. Uh, one thing I do want to uh, criticize Amy's design for is that in the comics, Amy has this snitch going on. It's like right next to her it's her friend it's her buddy but in game you know amy doesn't treat her snitch the same way she does in her comic if there is any sort of redesign for amy in the future i would love it so that her snitch is actually floating next to her whether it's on her shoulder on her back just somewhere on her body and then maybe if she throws a snitch out she doesn't just pick it up and throw it no 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 she points at a direction and the snitch follows the exact spot if amy is down the snitch just sort of floats up and just looks like it's panicking or when you take down Amy, the snitch next to her also explodes or flies away. Or what else? What else? What else? Or when you're Amy, when you're playing as Amy and you're picking somebody up, the snitch is trying to help the person up too. I think that'd be cute. There could be some problems with that because uh, it could mess up her silhouette. People might think, oh, do I shoot the snitch? Do I shoot Amy? But I think, I think it might work. I mean, there's some really weird hitboxes in the game already, like Fragger and Thunder's huge backpack. So a tiny itty bitty snitch next to Amy's head. I don't think that should be a, that big of a problem, right? Right. Anyway, that's my thoughts. That's my thoughts, y'all. So this was an adventure. This was wild. This was like unfiltered, shiny window. Just letting you know straight straight off the bat on, on the lore and the characters. Like, this is good. Like, it's really... It's given me ease of mind. Knowing that things have been confirmed and deconfirmed. That there are finally answers on the stuff onto the creative expression and creative freedom and the narrative that SD has provided SD has for the mercenaries. For and the it's mercenaries. so nice to see basically more confidence from SD, knowing that, yes, these are the characters we have. We know that they're quite fun and humorous and really likable. So here you go. Like that, 
and the lore and the stuff that's good but also 30 30 that's the magic number we got here like everyone is in their god dang 30s why there's no way sky hammer and saw bones saw hammer oh saw hammer that could be a ship name god damn so, okay so saw hammer being the same age with the white hair there Really? I know I'm saying like, oh, he's got white hair, he's gotta be older, and then meanwhile you have Sparks here who has white hair. And then you have Red Eye here, who's in his 40s, but then you have Junior, you have Hunter being in his 50s. Oh no, it's fucking me up. Is this real? Is it like not a typo or anything? You know, you know what? Thank you. Thank you, Splash Damage. I really enjoyed this. I love looking through the lore. Let's go back to Aura. She's my baby. I love her. Aura. Aura. Aura, 2nd of October. So that is... Well, she's in the Halloween month. Ooh, Aura is spooky. God dang. Anyone else in October? Come on, that's gonna be like Phantom. It don't even say October. It just says 6-7. Did I even go through... I, I think I skipped Phantom by accident. God damn it. I'm spoiling myself here. Like, SD, thank y'all so much. This is really fun. This is like super creative. I love that things have been just dealt with and answered. And I hope that the community uses this information to just add a bit more creativity to the game. You know, make some more fan content, mention this stuff around, and just enjoy the, this itty bit that SD's given out. So there's that. So, what else can I say, y'all? This is a pretty raw reaction. It's to thank y'all again for watching me geek over some lore of DB, of a free-to-play, open-beta, multiplayer shooter. Four years? Of just waiting around four years of questions and it's been answered so uh it's nice it's nice hope you have a great day hope you all drink lots of water i'll just be lurking around just reading all this over again and i gotta give you a big kiss so come here come here come here hi i'm carolyn and i'm 30. I'm not 56, and I haven't had any work done. People sometimes say to me, Carolyn, your face is completely fucking frozen. I say, how can my face be frozen if I haven't had a stitch of goddamned work done? I've decided to make this short video to disprove the claims that my face is immobile and emotionless. Here are a few hypothetical situations to which I will react. This is me reacting to my husband, telling me he wants to file for divorce. This is me in the face of imminent death on an airplane. Here's me reacting to a traffic accident. Here's me reacting to my son graduating from college. That was a trick. My son can't be graduating from college. Because I'm 30. I'm Carolyn. Don't talk shit about me.